Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and we're joined here tonight in the studio by Dr. Hussein Khaled, the former Minister of Higher Education and Scientific Research. Dr. Khaled, thank you very much for joining us this You're evening. Welcome. Dr. Khaled, now before we start talking about these initiatives in specific and what needs to be done to steer the educational uh, sector and the educational uh, industry in general in the right direction. How would you evaluate and rate the, uh, the political leadership's keenness on really developing and restructuring of the educational sector here in Egypt over the past four years? We are all happy by the uh, uh, president or the uh, political leadership uh, to direct the priority list to education and health. Mm -hmm. And of course, education includes the pre-university education and higher education. Uh, the uh, Constitution also uh, uh, states that we have to spend 1% uh, of the uh, GDP mm -hmm. to scientific research, 2% to higher education, 3% to health, and 4% to pre-university education. And now I think that we are in the right direction. There is uh, actually a priority for uh, raising the standard of education, mm -hmm. uh, the infrastructure, the teachers, the uh, equipment and the facilities, and of course the IT technology. Yes. Well. Egypt, the whole country and the whole economy is moving towards the sustainable uh, development uh, goals for Egypt 2030 yes. and education is, uh, the educational sector is no different. Yes. So how would you rate the, the development in terms of the quality of the educational process here in Egypt trying to meet the sustainable development goals for Egypt 2030? I mean we've seen over the past few years, especially during the coronavirus pandemic, turning into e-learning using um, the ICT in many of the educational, the steps of the educational processes and uh, the examinations and uh, the results and all of these things. How would you rate the development in terms of the quality of education to reach the Sustainable Development Goals Egypt 2030? Well, the quality of education now is much better than 10 years or 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And this is obvious. Uh, we need more and more uh, development in this area. Uh, of course, uh, the uh, corona or the COVID pandemic was a golden chance to change the uh, way, the techniques, uh, how we uh, educate the uh, students and the uh, other persons. Mm -hmm. uh, this was uh, help, yeah, like a, a much help uh, to change the environment, especially uh, in countries with high uh, number of population. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, the universities and the schools are crowded with uh, students. And uh, this technology will help much in uh, uh, reaching the goals of education uh, via the internet and via the other uh, uh, IT systems. Mm -hmm. uh, we improved a, a lot of this during the last two or three years. And uh, uh, one of the aspects of uh, success, uh, the uh, standard of education now is much better. The uh, degrees of the students are better than before. Uh, the, now there is kind of a specification uh, of the goals of each uh, student. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, oh, he wants to go to the medicine, to study medicine later on, to study engineering and so on. And this now is one of the priorities in the schools. Yes. Well, Dr. Khaled, you've mentioned uh, the idea of the the high numbers of the Egyptian population, the high numbers of students, and the present rate rated needing uh, thousands uh, more classrooms to, uh, to facilitate the educational process for the students. Now, it seems that it's not just the work of the Ministry of Education, but also talking about the Ministry of Planning. You talked about uh, using the uh, ICT in the educational process, so this includes the Ministry of Information Communication Technology. What is the 
what are the dynamics of the cooperation between these different ministries, the education, planning, uh, ICT? How is the, the, what is the nature of this cooperation and who bears the biggest sort of responsibility? Well, uh, the magic word here is uh, uh, teamwork. Mm -hmm. And teamwork is important. And usually this happens uh, during the cabinet meetings. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, the uh, on-site visits by more than one or two or three uh, ministers together with the political leadership. And this was facilitate very much the solutions of any uh, online uh, uh, problem. Mm -hmm. uh, this also uh, goes in hand with the raising the level of the teachers mm -hmm. uh, from the economic, uh, from the uh, social, and from the scientific point of view. Mm -hmm. Well. Speaking of the, the teachers, and the teachers are the, the, the cornerstone, really, of the educational sure. process. Now, the government has launched these two uh, initiatives, uh, I Am The Teacher initiative and also the Teachers Support initiative. Now, you spoke about the development and raising the, the, the skill level and the, uh, the qualifications of the Egyptian teacher, uh, be it in uh, pre-university and pre-higher uh, education and also in higher education and scientific research. How are these initiatives going to take the Egyptian teacher from one level to a whole different level, keeping up with the international standards? Well, let us speak first for the social and economic mm -hmm. uh, uh, ways of improving. Yes. Uh, these two projects will help uh, to give the uh, teachers a kind of in-kind support rather than cash support. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, if he wants to have a loan, then he will be uh, allowed three times his salary Mm -hmm. uh, and he may or she may pay this over the coming 10 months. This is very important. The other thing is that it will help in paying the bills, like the electricity, water supply and so on. This also will lead to uh, r rise the standard, mm -hmm. economic standard of the teachers and at the same time let them concentrate more on, the, uh, on their job, mm -hmm. perfecting their job how they are going to uh, go more to the school uh, school they are working in, how they are going to give more time to their students. Mm -hmm. They will not be uh, uh, feeling tired or feeling busy with other things than uh, doing the, their job. This will directly improve their standards. Mm -hmm. In addition, of course, to uh, having the facilities like uh, giving diplomas, like in giving uh, continued professional education, uh, uh, even getting more uh, or more degrees from the higher education uh, kind of, uh, of uh, uh, support and so on. Uh, this comp this uh, will complete the circle mm -hmm. around the teacher in order to improve uh, his uh, performance. Yes. Well, speaking one uh, part of it uh, that you've mentioned is really boosting the socio-economic sort of incentives for a teacher. A teacher is uh, one of the hardest and most important and noble jobs in any country. Now, how do we actually work on increasing these uh, socio-economic incentives for the teacher? Is this something that is uh, discussed during cabinet meetings? Does it include more ministries and more institutions being involved in the development of the teacher within the educational system? Well, of course, this is the, the priority number one for any minister who are dealing with this kind of job. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, in view of the uh, uh, current economic constraints that are present due to the uh, COVID pandemic, to the, you know, the, the whole world now mm -hmm. is, uh, is facing uh, many financial problems due to many uh, uh, The Russia-Ukraine conflict of course, as well, yeah. Uh, uh, the, so it, it is a, uh, it's a very difficult formula, mm -hmm. how to support and at the same time keep on uh, uh, during these constraints. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, there are many out-of-box ideas mm -hmm. that can be developed and applied. Mm -hmm. And one of them, of course, is the two initiatives that you have just mentioned. Uh, there are also other uh, out-of-box, uh, like, you know, uh, 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 trying to increase more 
the uh, open learning, the uh, distant learning, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, change the way they are examining the students mm -hmm. because this is very important also as well. All of this will lead to, uh, to the goal we want to, to have uh, yes. in the future. Well, the second part of it is the uh, raising the standards and the, the, the quality of the teaching process itself and the, these initiatives also work on training teachers yes. and uh, granting them diplomas after they meet certain qualifications. What kind of qualifications and training that will result in the diplomas being handed over to the teachers uh, within these two initiatives? Hands-on training, you mm -hmm. know, uh, and also in addition to this, uh, uh, opening the uh, the uh, 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 the uh, scope uh, to the outside world. Mm -hmm. uh, so we gain the experience of many other countries that improved the w way they are uh, improving the level of uh, education and of the teachers, mm -hmm. and this, uh, of course, come. Uh, uh, by two ways, either by the way of two TOT, mm -hmm. which is you get uh, kind consultants from abroad, and then they learn uh, the others to learn the others and so on, or giving some kind of uh, uh, missions to the mm -hmm. outside uh, countries uh, where they can develop their uh, language, for example, yes. their uh, way of uh, uh, developing the science to the students and so on. Mm -hmm. These are the important issues. And, and I, I see that the government is now going in the right direction, mm -hmm. really, especially the last seven or eight years. Mm -hmm. Well, we are going in the right direction, as you've mentioned, and the educational system has uh, really achieved noticeable progress. Yet, we didn't still meet the level of the, the educational systems in developed countries. We've had a lot of uh, cooperation. Uh, there was talk about the, the, the Japanese educational system. There's been talk about development and cooperation in different international educational systems. What is standing in the way of yes. reaching this really high yes. international standard of education? Although we are improving, mm -hmm. we are not yet at the level we want to be. Mm -hmm. And there are three problems that mm -hmm. may, uh, if solved, may help in uh, uh, reaching our goals. Yes. The financial issue, mm -hmm. this is very important, to raise the infrastructure, to have more schools, and to give more salaries to the teachers. Mm -hmm. uh, the second thing is to, uh, uh, in addition to the financial, to change the laws and legislations mm -hmm. and all the uh, uh, kind of legal aspects in order to f uh, solve the problems, mm -hmm. the bureaucratic problems that are helping this. And lastly, the full-time job. Yes. Uh, the teacher must stay f uh, five days mm -hmm. a week from 9 to 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. working and trying to uh, help uh, the students. Mm -hmm. These are the three. Full-time job, uh, uh, improve the financial support, and also uh, change or improve the uh, laws and legislations that are controlling the political and the educational process in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Dr. Khaled, who do you think needs uh, the most work? Um, Pardon, are they the teachers of the pre-higher educational uh, period or are they the teachers in higher education and scientific research? Who needs the most development, more, uh, I mean, raising the, the standards and the quality of teaching? Both of them need this, mm -hmm. but uh, the priority is for the teachers of pre-university education mm -hmm. because they are the people who are going to uh, put the, you know, the, uh, this, the settlement of yes. the, the base of uh, mm -hmm. any, uh, any person uh, in the country. Mm -hmm. Well, if we are talking about even pre-higher uh, education teachers, we're talking about thousands, maybe even millions of teachers. How can we motivate them to really make use of these initiatives? I am 
the teacher and the teacher's support. How can we um, motivate them and give them enough incentives to really take part on developing their own skills? I'm, I'm not even just talking about teachers in the main big major cities, but also in uh, smaller uh, rural areas, the governorates, the villages. How can we motivate these millions, the well, high number of teachers? In addition to the uh, issues we have just discussed, mm -hmm. I think that the media is also a very important aspect of uh, developing those teachers in the remote areas. Mm -hmm. And also to change the attitude of the community towards the teachers. Mm -hmm. uh, we lived many, many years ago uh, some of the plays and uh, movies that are making fun of the teachers. Mm -hmm. This is not right. Uh, uh, the, better, the best way to do is to uh, let the society feel that the teacher is uh, a respectable person, mm -hmm. is a very important one. He one who is letting all the country uh, improve from the kind of education point of view. Yes. In addition to this way, we also must make benefit of the uh, uh, experience again during the COVID-19 mm -hmm. by you know, reaching the people now via many social media, many aspects of uh, IT technology. Uh, this will communicate and connect and integrate all the uh, 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 parts of education system, mm -hmm. especially in remote areas, to each other. So they can make benefit of those in the central areas. They can communicate, they can get their experience from them, and so on. Mm -hmm. Well, you spoke about the, the educational process during the COVID-19 pandemic. What sort of uh, results do you feel that, or success stories of the, the sort of crash course training in the educational process during the COVID-19. What can we learn from that period in terms of education we can actually build upon? And what were the things that um, constituted some sort of obstacles or challenges within the educational system? Well, crash courses are, uh, does not need to be the a classic way of education. Mm -hmm. We also use this only when there is an emergency yes. or a limited time or a lack of communication and so on. Mm -hmm. But the major lessons we learned from the COVID-19 pandemic uh, is that how you can communicate with people without seeing them uh, physically mm -hmm. and how you can produce uh, modules, virtual modules, mm -hmm. that can be repeated more and more and more to the student while he is sitting at home or in the school, if it yes. is possible. And this also uh, uh, let the redundant part of the uh, curricula mm -hmm. uh, disappear. Yes. Because we also uh, used to have very redundant uh, mm -hmm. ways of uh, curricula and laws and so on. And I think these all these, in addition to what we just mentioned, uh, are the lessons we learned from the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Mm -hmm. How far, Doctor, are we in terms of eliminating this redundancy in the curricula? Because still a lot of uh, pre-higher educational well, uh, processes yes. are... Uh, well, I, I can speak about higher education mm -hmm. because this is my speciality, yes, and especially the medical education. Mm -hmm. And we, for example, in the medical schools in, in the country, uh, so whether they are governmental or uh, private or uh, NGOs or non-profit, mm -hmm. uh, we changed the medical education from the system of six plus one, which is six years of, uh, 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 you know, uh, not uh, training or mm -hmm. not clinical applied uh, sources, mm -hmm. just lectures and so on, to five plus two. That is, we decrease the number of the theoretical, the theoretical and the practical, and decrease mm -hmm. the number of practical. Mm -hmm. And this uh, now the medical students are in the fourth in the fourth uh, uh, year since mm -hmm. the application of this system. And next uh, next year will be the fifth one, mm -hmm. and then we will see how we are going to make benefit of this by applying more training in the uh, two years of uh, uh, training, like we mm -hmm. say it, MTS, yes. MTS. And so this is very important. Mm -hmm. This is a very 
a classic or successful example how we uh, uh, overcome this redundancy. Yes. The integration. Mm -hmm. Integration is very important. The magic word here is the integration. And instead of trying to repeat the same lecture from different aspects, like for example, and the anatomy and physiology and biochemistry and so on, we, we try to uh, integrate this to be one module mm -hmm. that is going to explain one subject. Mm -hmm. And this can be uh, applied on any kind of education, whether it is pre-university or uh, higher education. Yes. Well, in, an, in a lot of the developed countries, they formulate or design their educational process um, in regards or in terms of what they actually need economically. So, do you feel that Egypt needs to do much more of that now? I mean, we've seen a lot of, uh, in terms of higher education, a lot of universities that are specialized in certain things, more universities uh, in terms of technical training, uh, information communication technology, artificial intelligence. So, do we need more of this sort of adaptation of our higher education, even maybe even pre-higher education, that would be uh, accommodated and accustomed to our Egyptian uh, economic needs? Sure. Mm -hmm. We have now uh, the... Uh, of course, we need more, mm -hmm. but uh, still we are sh uh, in short of applying this. You know, the technical education must start even from the primary school mm -hmm. and continue on till uh, graduation from the higher uh, uh, institutes. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is very important because we are lacking this now in the country. Um, most of the uh, students wants to get a theoretical certificate and then they cannot find work. Mm -hmm. But while technical education, uh, the country is in, in, in big need of this technical education and I hope that uh, this is going to be achieved uh, with the, uh, the visits and the on-site uh, follow-up of the president to many aspects of the uh, uh, country of the uh, needs of the uh, uh, you know the citizens and so on mm -hmm. and this will help much in improving this yes and I hope that uh, uh, well one day I dreamed that we can separate the technical education from the Ministry of Education and mm -hmm from the Ministry of Higher Education and make a, a third ministry mm -hmm. for technical education mm -hmm. that is going to uh, follow the students from the primary school till the higher institutes. Yes. I hope this would be achieved. Yes. But this is my own idea. That is the dream. Well, Dr. Khaled, I mean, we see in terms of higher education, we see a lot of uh, cooperation with international uh, universities in different countries with different educational institutions and it's quite visible uh, having this sort of cooperation and joint degrees and diplomas uh, and even maybe sometimes in secondary education but how can we also make use of such a cooperation with international educational systems and institutions in primary schools? Well, by what you just said, the Japanese schools, the German schools, the mm -hmm. French schools, and so on, because this, in addition, but we have to, in any kind of education, mm -hmm. whether it is coming from any other country, to put our own Egyptian, uh, you know, stamp. language and mm -hmm. stamp, of course, mm -hmm. uh, with the others. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you do this, you will, uh, you know, open the environment and the uh, you know the uh, uh, minds of the mm -hmm. students uh, on different uh, other uh, countries and how they live how they educate uh, uh, the students and so on mm -hmm. and uh, i think the japanese school is one of the successful example of this yes in addition to of course the other uh, specialized schools yes well dr Khaled, when we speak about the development of uh, the teachers in Egypt and really raising not just the uh, skill level but also the socio-economic level for uh, the profession of a teacher. Now a teacher like a doctor always needs to develop, always needs to study, always needs sure. to keep up with the highest uh, technological 
developments and the uh, more advanced educational theories at least. So how can we work on maintaining and uh, assessing and monitoring the levels of the teachers here in Egypt? Well, by just simple integration of the higher education with the education. Mm -hmm. uh, the higher education now facilities are open through the governmental, private and non-profit uh, universities mm -hmm. uh, to three levels, the diploma level, the master level and PhD level. And uh, 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 the w way to go through this is to open the chance for any teacher to get these certificates or get these kind of different levels of, of uh, perfection uh, of, or, or uh, uh, having more knowledge and more experience uh, via the online learning mm -hmm. with the universities. For example, the faculties of Tarbea Mm -hmm. which is, uh, you know, the, the way of, uh, of uh, graduating teachers from mm -hmm. the high school is one of the aspects. Yes. And now it is very much uh, propagated through the uh, more than 50 uh, universities in, in, in the country now. Mm -hmm. I think the president said before that we need a university for uh, every million uh, population. So mm -hmm. if we are 10... Uh, 100 million, mm -hmm. then we need 100 universities. Yes. Now we are between 50 and 60 universities, and mm -hmm. we, we need more and more universities, and this will open the chance for the teachers to graduate their uh, or upgrade their level through studying diploma or master or PhD. Mm -hmm. Well, there is a lot of attention to the development of the skill set of a teacher in terms of how, uh, how in control and how they command the subject matter that they actually teach. But a big part of the teaching process is the social and the emotional sort of handling of the students. How can we guarantee the teachers are also meet not just the uh, curricular or the academic level of uh, excellence in terms of what they're actually teaching, but also the social and emotional level in nurturing the students, uh, understanding the their mentality. Of course. Mm -hmm. Well, by providing the place, mm -hmm. you know, we used, to, when I was uh, in the primary school, uh, other you know, preparatory and high school, mm -hmm. uh, we used to have uh, music sessions, uh, agriculture sessions. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we go outside the uh, school to visit uh, some certain villages and so on. Now, due to the higher number of students and the lower number of the uh, buildings, mm -hmm. this is becoming more and more difficult. We used to play football, to play mm -hmm. tennis and so on. And putting this kind of, of uh, bara uh, educational activities mm -hmm. will help the students to stay more and more in these schools. The teachers th themselves will enjoy doing this mm -hmm. and uh, I don't think how to do this mm -hmm. in view of the current uh, uh, you know possible or impossible uh, places to mm -hmm. do this uh, but this is the way to, to improve the education from the aspects you, you just mentioned. Yes. Well, there's been a lot of talk in terms of the, the governmental efforts in developing the educational system, and it's mainly focusing on national education. And comes the role of the private education, the private sector, uh, helping build schools uh, for uh, national education and really uh, provide good uh, places, venues for education, good facilities for the national education that would be available for all students of Egypt uh, at affordable uh, prices and costs. So how would you assess the nature of the private sector and the public sector in terms of developing the national education here in Egypt? It's very weak mm -hmm. and we hope uh, to uh, spend more efforts in this aspect. 
and the society must move the NGOs, the uh, you know the uh, businessmen, the uh, companies, mm -hmm. uh, the banks, the all uh, the, the, the people who can help must spend some of their efforts, mm -hmm. some of their uh, money mm -hmm. in this aspect mm -hmm. because this will be refunded to them. Yes. Uh, via the, the raising the level of education will help in perfection in all of aspects of our life mm -hmm. and this will help the people who are helping in uh, raising the standard of the schools and of these teachers. Yes, well how, how would we encourage the private sector to be, play a, a bigger Through role? Through media. Mm -hmm. <laughs> media is very important. Mm -hmm. We have to to, uh, in, in, to apply or to promote the culture mm -hmm. of helping uh, the uh, country or helping the society, helping the people uh, to improve their uh, quality of life uh, through education and also health. Mm -hmm. Health is also very important. And I think the media must play a very important role in this mm -hmm. uh, because this is going to be reflected on every aspect of our life. Yes, definitely. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as Dr. Khaled mentioned, whenever we talk about the development or the cornerstone of the uh, development here in Egypt, people always focus on two sectors, two industries, the educational sector and the health sector. And we see the government and the political will really trying to uh, leapfrog and take uh, huge strides in development in these two sectors in specific. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this edition of the Daily Debate. But before we go, I'd like to thank my very distinguished guest, Dr. Hussein Khaled, the former Minister of Higher Education and Scientific Research. Dr. Khaled, always a pleasure having you with us. On thank the you. Show. It's an honor for me to be with you. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay tuned for more coming up on Night International. I'm Haini Saif. Thank you for joining us.